and most of you yesterday. Pleasure to be here today. Um, just a little bit about myself. I spent most of my life uh, in, in the U.S., my career in the U.S., working with corporations. Uh, and recently, I started with the Potential a couple years back. Uh, and it's really, really a pleasure. It's a fascinating world, the entrepreneurial world and the, and the startup world and everything else. So it's, it's really fascinating to be here today. I'm just going to talk a bit about lean startups. Uh, several of you, I'm sure you've attended the webinars, so you have seen some of this so far. I just want to give you a recap so we can be ready for the afternoon workshops that we're going to have. Uh, I'm sure all of you have attended the workshops. We've gone through uh, the entrepreneurship and innovation, what Khaled has spoken about uh, earlier today. What is innovation? How we take our opportunities and turn them into, into businesses and business ideas. Then we talked about the business model, the business model canvas that is really the basis for all of our work that we're doing. Uh, and this is the recommended business model framework that we're going to be using. Uh, and we talked about the external, internal uh, elements. And of course, the starting up, which I'll talk about a little bit now. If you recall, the business model, the external elements, and uh, we talked about customer segments, customer relationships, revenue streams, channels, value proposition. Again, the main thing here is how are we going to have a unique value proposition? And we're lucky today that we have, we're going to have with us several people, several coaches and people who are very knowledgeable in these areas who will help you through this business model canvas, from Khaled to Shadi to Muhammad to, to other colleagues who will be able to take you through this model so you can put all of these, if you want, uh, uh, you, you can fill all of these spaces. Um, also on the internal elements, so now that you have your external elements, all of the customer segments, uh, uh, your revenue, etc., you need to also make sure that you have your internal organization in place. So from your resources, whether it's people, physical, your activities, uh, processes, workflows, your partners, whether you're going to have partners or not. Uh, it's not always a must that you have partners, but at some point you might. And of course, your cost structure. So it's not only knowing what is your revenue going to be about, but also what are you going to spend your money on and how you're going to spend your money on. So starting up, when we say starting up, like Khaled said earlier, uh, in the past, how, how did we do startups? We sat there, we did a huge business plan. Uh, we sat there, we did like a whole year of strategy and business planning and all of that. But what happens to startups if we do that? They're going to spend a lot of money okay, doing business planning, doing strategy. They haven't tested the market. They're spending their money on research, on, on, on developing uh, products that might, not be, uh, uh, that might not work in the market. Okay. So the old way was writing a business plan, a whole big business plan, I don't know, 100 pages, you know? That was yesterday, okay? Today, we talk about lean startups. What do we mean by lean startups? Can anybody tell me without putting it, without cheating? <laughs> <laughs> what do we mean by lean startups? You're all startups, so what did you do? What do you do normally when you want to start up? Go ahead. I think uh, it's about uh, finding the, the, the best business model for the startup uh, at the least uh, at the minimal cost. Okay. Uh, so it's like uh, experimenting. Uh, experimenting. Market. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. So when we talk about lean startup, is experimenting, is doing prototypes, is testing the market first. But you don't want to spend your whole time testing, of course. You want to do something about it. But at least do some testing. Listen to customers, listen to the market. Again, your products are gonna be used. If I'm gonna do a beautiful product that no one's gonna use, what's the use of that? So listen to customers, what do they need, okay? Again, we, what we, when we say lean startups, we say iterative design over traditional big design. So we're not doing a huge design, we're doing it step by step in phases, and we're testing to make sure that we are, it's gonna work for all of us, okay? So the lean approach, we say test it out first. So put the prototype in place. Try to sell the prototype. 
This is what we're doing today in this, in this challenge. We're going to be in front of investors. We're going to try to sell a prototype that then they will sponsor you for your business. And of course, when you, uh, when you uh, get feedback from the market, from the customer, from the vendor, from the investor, you're going to be doing some redesign and reintroduce your product. Okay? Again, you see things and you say, why? But I deem things that never were, and I say, why not? That's George Bernard Shaw. That's really an entrepreneur. Why not? Why not do this? Why not do that? So it's very important to keep your mind open, okay? Keep all your ideas in front of you and uh, uh, work towards that. So let's talk a little bit about the business model that we're going to go into more details this afternoon, okay? Don't let this scare you. It's just a framework. It's very simple. At first, you might look at it and say, oh, it's very hard. It's very simple when you start looking at it. Again, like we said, we've got the external and internal aspects of the business model. So for each of these segments, if you wish, for each of these cases, we're going to start asking ourselves questions. So when we talk about customer segments, who are we selling to? Who are the customers who are going to use our products? Okay? When we talk about the channels, how are we distributing our product? Okay? When we talk about the relationships, what relationships are we doing with our customers to maintain this, this uh, product? I'm not going to go through all of this because we're going to go through it in detail this afternoon. But just, I just wanted to give you a recap of it. Okay? Anyone have any questions about this for now? Just a high level question. Okay? okay. So again, your business model, after you sketch out your hypothesis on the business model, you need to listen to the customers. Listen to what they want, listen to what they, they need, okay? And always validate what you what your customers are saying. Try to create something that is really gonna be working in the in the market that the customers are gonna are, are gonna use. We talked about lean startup, agile, be agile, okay? So again, it's, it should be very simple, very fast, from requirements to analysis to implementation, testing, evaluation, planning. So when I say lean startup, it doesn't mean we do things just like that, you know, uh, ad hoc. Of course, there should be a structure, okay, but it should be fast. We're talking about being fast, being nimble, being agile. Also, you determine your total costs and your business model, okay? You need to know how much you're gonna spend because you've got some fixed costs, you've got some recurring, ongoing costs, so you need to know ahead of time what you're gonna spend your money on, okay? Your fixed expenses, if you're gonna need rent, a, a, a space, etc. Your rented expenses, maybe your inventory, shipping, packaging, etc. marketing campaign, those could be valuable costs. Same being an agile. The traditional way, we used to have a business plan. Now we have a business model. We talk about a business model. This is what we want to say agile. In the traditional way, we used to have product management. I used to be a product manager. We spent months and months developing the product, and putting features in it, etc. Now we talk about a customer development, product process, very fast, we listen to our customers, our customers feed into the product. Again, same thing on the engineering side, agile development for all of our, uh, for all of our uh, steps. The functions used to be by department. We used to have a sales department, a finance department, a HR department, etc. Now, it's much more agile teams working together, you know. Uh, I work a lot in HR and organization development. We used, to, we used to talk a lot about hierarchy. Now we talk about wirearchy because everybody's wired. Everybody is connected. Everybody's interconnected. And that's the important thing. People work virtual. I'm sure the teams here, they're not all in the same countries. So they have to work virtual. So you have to have that connection available. Okay? Again, from accounting in the traditional way to the metrics, we analyze our, our, our findings and we enhance on our, on our metrics, the cost of the acquisition costs, the churn, etc. Exceptions, you know, 
Here, for example, in the traditional way, somebody did something wrong, we fire them right away. Okay? Now, no. It's, we do, we learn from what we did, from the mistakes we did, and we enhance on it. We evolve. Again, speed. Very important. To be agile, you need to have speed. So building a prototype also is an important step of this, of this whole model, if you wish. The prototype is going to help you test what you're doing. Okay? It's going to make it possible to measure what, what your business is going to be about. Okay? And it's going to help you describe your product more effectively. Again, when you have a prototype, people will take you more seriously because they know that you are very uh, serious and sincere about your business, that you're not coming like this out of the cloud and, and talking, uh, talking in the cloud. Some tips, don't do your prototype alone. That's why we encourage you to have teams, to have mentors, to work with others because others can challenge you. You know, you, you might have an idea and if, if you don't share it with someone else, you're not going to know whether your idea is feasible or not. So use other people, use mentors, use, use colleagues, practice in front of people. Also for your, for your prototype, set up a time limit. It shouldn't take the whole year to build a prototype. Set yourself some deadlines. Okay? And never write on the business model canvas. Like you, say, like you see here, okay, we have post-it notes. Why? Because we don't want to write and erase. We're going to put colored post-it notes and move them as we need. And we'll, we'll, we'll do some exercises this afternoon about that. Okay, it's very interesting. Some suggested readings for you on the lead startups. You know, these are some books that I do recommend that you that you take notes and, and read them. There's a lot on the internet about lead startups, so I mean, we're not going to cover everything today. But you can talk, you can look at the business model generation. That's going to help you with that. The lead startup by Eric Rice. He's the, he's the, if you want, the guru of Lean Startup. And Steve Blank also is another person who's going also Lean Startup. And the Startup of You. So take notes of these books and read them. And I wish you the best, okay, uh, today and tomorrow, and even when you continue. So hopefully when you're, when you're done with this exercise and you have your business, you can join us again with our SME program because that's you're going to be a small, a small enterprise. Okay, and you're going to grow. And I wish you the best. Any questions?